Welcome to Connecting with Jennifer Phils, and today I have James Cole, who I know through the auto repair industry, and James, welcome. Thank you, Jen. Thank you so much for having me. I'm privileged and honored to be here. Yeah, well, I'm just glad that you're here because, you know, we always have fun when we talk, and Absolutely. pretty much we're just going to we're just gonna ask you uh, what makes you special and unique right off the bat, so tell us a little bit about who you are, where you work. And then what makes you a superstar? I'd be happy to. So who I am, I'm James Cole. I'm the lead service advisor at Cole Auto Incorporated in Reno, Nevada. Um, uh, gosh, who I am, where I work. Uh, I guess what makes me special and unique, I would have to say that I've been privileged and honored to be around the best people in every industry that I've worked for. That's what makes me special and unique because I've been around special and unique people. Special and unique people just don't get born. You're actually grown through your life experiences, your challenges, your especially your failures. And um, I've been really privileged and honored to be around these the similar, well, not similar, very differentiating industries that I've learned how people work physiologically. For example, from 24 to 29, I was a repo man in the Bay Area, worked for two different companies. I didn't know First, that. Yeah, I was the guy who showed up at two in the morning with a tow truck to take your car if you didn't make your payment. Um, that really showed, and I did that for five years through two different companies, and they were both the top companies in California at their times. Um, one still is, the other one is no longer existent, but um, I was trained by a, a an exceptional round array of people that really exposed me to the challenges of that industry and also guided me whenever I made failures so I could improve in my industry. Um, that industry really showed me the dark side, which people can actually go through to the extreme. When you're showing up to repossess someone's car in the middle of the night, chances are they're not having a good time in life. So you really see the, I hate to use the word suffering, but you see the indignant suffering of people and the hardships that they go through. And there were those who just were lazy enough and didn't pay their bills, but it was a lot of the times there were unforeseen circumstances, illness in the family, death in the family, divorce, you know, um, uh, addiction even played a role in that. So when you, when you see that extreme to where people can actually go low, and then, you know, I did that for five years. And then the next five years, I actually ran one of the, the most popular and largest nightclubs in San Francisco. So I went to the total opposite other extreme where I got to see people at their happiest and everything was honky dory and they had no problem throwing money around and everything was just joy and fun and and having that wide array of two extremes and being exposed to everything in between on a differentiating scale I think that's what makes me special because not too many people get exposed to that a lot of people tend to and this isn't a bad thing but a lot of people tend to go to one industry and they 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 enveloped within that industry within those parameters. I like to think that I was very resistant to having uh, borders and parameters in my life experience. And I sought to really in, in, indulge in that. And here I am at 43 with a lot of different array of life experience, especially with people. So I'd say the unique thing is I don't say I'm a professional in what I do. I'm a practitioner of people all the way around. Ah, oh, this is why I love you, brother. Oh my God, seriously. Okay. I love it. I love it. This interview allows me to get to the know people better. And like, yes. oh my God, yeah. you have you so never much have thought. I you just want to, I want to like take the onion and peel it apart. Okay, darling. That's what makes people so interesting though, Jen, is we're all onions. And when you peel us apart, you, you uncover things you never thought you would see. And definitely are, that are right. not visible from the surface. So that's really what, what physiologically just ticks my brain into high gear is when I'm like, wow, I'm so surprised I learned that other layer of that person. Isn't that amazing? Okay. It is. Because it is. you are such a wonderful, positive, inspirational, uplifting guy. I've Thank always you. just enjoyed your presence. And of course, you know, Vinny also, I Absolutely. mean, like the whole, the whole, you know, group that you work for at Co Auto. Yeah my God, you guys are all just like superstars. So like, first off, 
what in your life made you choose such giant pendulum swing bookends of watching people suffer as you're reclaiming property mm -hmm. from these poor people mm -hmm. to, you know, the complete opposite end of providing joy via nightclub. Like what, how, how, how did you, this amazing human being get to this place and such diversity? I've always been a curious person and I've always thrown myself into situations that piqued my curiosity as well as my interest. And I just, I found my passion there. I found my passion on being a practitioner at different processes. I didn't like the thought of doing one job for the rest of my life for 20, 30, 40 years. Not that I say, if, if it's some other person's cup of tea, mazel tov, I implore them to do so. It just wasn't my path. I really, res I was a resistant kid in school. I was always in trouble for behavioral problems because I was a class clown. So I always kind of carved this way that I fit through a niche in my own realm. And when I came across these different industries, it just, it, it really, it intrigued me to learn more and as much as I can, because I believe life experience on, on many scales just facilitates your character and development. So that's really what I sought to do. I have to attribute ma one major thing to my mother who made us once a year go and volunteer and do something for you know, the public or someone else, whether it was a soup kitchen or working in a retirement home. And I want, I chose the retirement home. She said, that's a good decision because you're going to see what regret looks like for some people who didn't take enough risk. And I wasn't going to end up like that. So that really pushed me into even more of a realm of what can I challenge myself with? What do people, you know, see that I, I say that I might be good at and should I look into that or should I actually divert and make up my own mind. When you grow and you change, especially in your adolescence and your teens and your early 20s, you're plagued with all these questions because you don't want to make a mistake. I was not afraid of making a mistake. I've been told no's and made mistakes my whole life. So I just didn't have that fear of failure. I had a very healthy relationship with it. So I wasn't afraid of trying anything new, especially when someone goes, you're going to be a repo man, you're five foot eight, you're not intimidating, you got kind of a squeaky voice and a high pitch when you get excited, what are you going to do? And it, I said, well, that may be your opinion, but I never predicated my life decisions on others. And that's where I say well, it was a really unique gift to be given. Bravo, brother. First off, your, uh, the, the similarities that you and I have, I have not been a repo person. Loved the movie, though. <laughs> <laughs> Loved that movie. With Emilio Estevez. It was yeah, a yeah, great yeah. movie. Yeah. But I find that the hopping around is a sign of super intelligence. I mean, yes. because we are so bored. Like, yes. people are always teasing me. Like, in fact, I was talking to a neighbor just yesterday. He's like, God, Jen, you're like everywhere. You're doing this, you're doing that. I'm like, yeah. I get bored easily. And I have this unquenchable thirst for knowledge. And yes, I agree yes. with you. I, as a younger person, I also would go visit um, retirement communities and mm -hmm. I just adored, adored yes. the older people. They have so much to share. They do. And if you sit at their feet and you open yourself up, oh my God, you learn about business. You learn about life. You learn about health. Yeah. You learn about relationships. Yes. Like there's your mentoring yeah. Boom. right there. Like, Hey kid. Let me, let me show you a little yes. window. And it's also kind of fascinating. I also love your fail forward approach. Yes. I also uh, uh, love that because the mantra I have been repeating to myself practically on a daily basis since age 24, and I'm 51 now, is face. Oh, you're, you're 31. Don't give me that. Love you. Love you. Now I feel every bit of 51 lately, but <laughs> thank you. I have, I have the wisdom to prove it, <laughs> but I will say though, that, you know, I, I, I learned this when I took my first sales job, face what you fear most and you'll mm -hmm. find it was nothing to fear at all. Yes. So whether that's making a phone call, making an uncomfortable email or phone yeah. call of addressing something that is like, mm -hmm. oh, this is so awkward, yeah. but I got to do it. And then you realize uh, you know what? It wasn't that bad. I survived it. And so yes. the more you do it, 
And, and you know, also too, I would say that because of your wonderful personality, your physical presence, your voice, you are a, the kind of guy that everyone can relate to. And so I'm sure that you had, I'm sure you had to do what you had to do as a repo man, but I'm sure yes. you had a level of compassion that mm -hmm. made it as painless. Is that the word? And, and uh, let, and speaking yeah. of cars, which cracks me up is here you are the guy that would take away the cars. Yeah. Now you're the guy as the service advisor. <laughs> Who helping wants to people, repair them? Helping yes. people walk through the repair of their beloved vehicles yes. because they need that thing and they need it now and they need, you know what I mean? It, it keeps yes. their life running. So yes. um, you really are a car guy, but like, yeah. proud <laughs> of it. You, how do you, how in the tough times do you use your approach to kind of keep people calm when you're giving them bad news? Well, I still have to work at this, even though being a practitioner of people for 15 plus years, number one, take a deep breath. I even forget to do this a lot. But if you take a little pause of levity and you get your, you know, because we're, we're all very reactive as, as individuals and as human beings. Um, if you take a little, uh, same with this guy yeah, right here. We all have to. Take a little bit of time to just get a little bit of levity, and get just a little bit more recentered. I find that you can approach the situation from a angle where it doesn't tend to arouse defensiveness or resentment. So even if you're addressing someone's concern and not telling them what they want to hear, it's all in the delivery vehicle and how you deliver that message. And, you know, I mean, there's so many different examples of wording that I could use that we probably don't even have time here. But I really think that that's one of the main tools to get started. And then empathy. I really put a lot of pressure on empathy. Yeah. I put a lot of pressure on conversations about it. I put a lot of pressure on circumstances surrounding it. And I think those are key things because if people don't feel that you are not relating to where they're coming from, they're not going to be too receptive on whatever else you are going to tell them. You could have all the snake oil salesman lines registered up here, but if you don't, ex if you don't have and captivate that person's attentiveness, and their, their own empathy to the situation and where you're coming from, that's where things reciprocate. And if you don't achieve that, you can't gain reciprocation. That's where you hit a wall. And that's where they stand on their side of the wall and you're on yours and it's, it's a standoff. And that never works in a trusting relationship, whether it's in a personal realm, whether it's in a business realm, or whether it's just in a socioeconomic realm where you're trying to talk and reason with someone that you're not trying to you know, convince or 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 levitate to your level, just respecting where they're coming from, not agreeing with it, but respecting it goes a long way. Because then you can find some middle ground. That's the whole point of debate. Debate and, and confrontation is not to arouse defensiveness and resentment, in my opinion. I think it's to create dialogue. And sometimes that dialogue can get frustrating to come across because we like to think that we're all inherently great at communicating, but as human beings, we are terrible at it, unfortunately is what I've come to find because I have with all my exposure and communication and skills I have to consistently work on it and that tells me that it's not something that could be achieved in a day and a month or even a year I've been doing you know working around people through good and bad times for 15 plus years and there's still people that surprise me and that shock me and that put me in that awe state where I go wow I actually didn't know. And it makes you drop back and you go, I didn't know as much as I thought I did. So let me go back and continue my personal development of investing in time in reading, investing in time of uh, meditation and, and gathering your thoughts and putting them in line to where they could align with your values and you, your thoughts. So you can effectively and efficiently but not only address a person's concern, but you can add a, an answer to their inquiries, which is something they commonly don't get. I get a lot of people that come in here that say, oh, thank you for so much for taking the time. Everywhere else I've called has been dismissive. And that's, that's unfortunate because yes, I guess we're all very busy in our lives, but people who are dismissive do not get to influence others or win friends. That's just, that doesn't, those two don't go together. So another thing I'd like to tell your audience, a big thing that helped me develop, you know, how to communicate with people and how to figure out where people are coming from was, Dale Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Uh, I don't know if you've ever read that, but great yep. read. Yeah. Unbelievable yep. read. And um, I can't tell you how much just reading certain things and then applying them 
in practical application to something that I've experienced, it just, boom, the light bulb goes on. And all you have to really do from there is the work. There's no mindfulness about it. Yeah. And um, I don't know if I've told you about the four currencies. A lot of times people hear about currency and they think money. Yeah. But there are three others. There's money, time, knowledge, and relationships. Ah, okay. And when you look at which one is the most important? Is it money? Well, we sure do talk about it a lot, especially yes. in times of inflation, yes. in times of good, in times of bad. Look at mm. me, how much money I got. Look at me, how little money I got, right? Absolutely. Time. Time is mm -hmm. also a currency. You can't get it back, right? No. Knowledge, that mm -hmm. unquenchable thirst that you and I have yes. for learning new things. But guess what? Relationships are the most important because they'll bring you more money. They'll bring you more time. They'll bring you more knowledge. Well, they'll bring you more deep, meaningful things in your life. So not true. just money, time, or knowledge. You know, cultivation and forming of deep, meaningful relationships is what being a practitioner of people is really all about. If you don't have that ability, you can learn the skill. But um, if, if people just expect to kind of learn it over time without reading how people think physiologically what the five main uh, fluids in a person's brain gets released, endorphins, dopamine, serotonin, serotonin, oxytocin, and cortisol, and how those affect and how those, when you figure out what arises those and what releases those, wow, it's kind of like giving a playbook to human physiology in such, so many broad different scales. And then when you start recognizing that, and you see a situation or you feel a situation where you're building a relationship and it's not going quite as you want, you can make adjustments right in the middle of it because you know what to look for. Yeah. 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 Oh my gosh. I love this. I love this. Okay. So whew, because relationships are so big for you. Yes. Who do you serve in your life? Now, I, that's a really big question, right? You yes. Got, I thought about different. this one for quite a while. But. I figured I, I <laughs> yeah. knew you would. I knew you would yeah. come in, so I can't wait to hear you. But I uh, like the onion. There yes. are different there's certain different circumferences around us, right? There's yes. the inner circle, mm -hmm. right? Then there's the the circle that's about you know, and it just keeps getting bigger. Yes, a ripple effect, if you will, or you know. Uh, so, who is it that you serve? Gosh, my family, my friends, and my loved ones. That goes from on a broad scale to, like I said, my family, um, my two sisters that still live in California, many of my cousins that still uh, are on the East Coast. Um, you know, my family, my friends, and my loved ones working. I, I really, and I have a good, I have an adopted brother that lives in Palm Springs that I talk to every week, Saturday night at 1030 to 1230. We never miss a day, or if we do, we reschedule it for another day. Those are the relationships that I constantly cultivate and serve because you have to put effort and keep up with everything because we're, we're moving in such a fast pace. We really are with email and, oh, just text me. And, and it's almost kind of been made almost impersonable if you don't maintain that person ability that you have with that person and say, hey, I'm going to call you. We're going to talk for this amount of time on this day. And, you know, we're going to catch up. So. I would say I serve my family, my friends, my loved ones. Of course, I have a pet, so I serve her. She's, she's you know, a very important person to me. Um, you know, but then when it gets drawn back to what I really serve within myself every day, facilitating my character and my ability with lessons learned and failures that I can practically apply to that going forward. That's, that's my main focus. Every day when I sit at home and I'm laying on my back about to go to bed and I say, what could I have done a little bit better today? And what could I improve on just 1% tomorrow? And do I always get it right? Absolutely not. I am riddled with failures across the board. And it's, I have a book as thick as the Bible to prove it. However, I'm always constantly thinking, how can I better serve myself, which in turn serves the business that I represent, which in turn serves the people that are composed in, within that business, whether it be my service manager, my owner, my accounting lady, my master technician, my quality control person, my other technicians that I have, how can I work to incrementally, whoa, I could improve there, so let me try to do this. And if it works, great, and if it doesn't, I could come back to the drawing board. So I have to say, that's, that's really a huge part of my service is constant reflection and also letting everyone know in my life, my, whether it's my sisters, my cousins, my great aunt, 
you know, my best friends, my brother, thank you so much for being a part of my life and being, you know, involved with it and talking to me or, you know, thank you so much for your compliment or thank you for putting me in my place because I didn't see it that way. Those are things that I tend to serve. Oh, I love it. I love it. Now, man, you, I could, I could be on here for hours with you, (laughs) but uh, I'm so curious as to what your why is. Oh, okay. Now our why can Mm -hmm. change over, over the duration of our life. You know, like when, you know, at, at one point our why might be, I want to make money. Another, another aspect could be, I want to make a difference in the world, Mm -hmm. you know, and we all have a different range of how we're yeah. going to do that and, and what Absolutely. drives us. So I'm yes. so fascinated, James. Please, what is your why? My why. My why is to constantly remind myself to focus on developing character and ability and not chase status and power. Mm-hmm. Because status you could lose. Power can get taken from you. Mm-hmm. But character and ability, once you develop it, you can take it wherever you go and it will always prevail against adversity. Well, at least most types of it from what I've seen. So that's my why. No matter what comes into my life, focus there and everything branches out from there. The other thing is having an attitude of gratitude. It costs you nothing to tell the person at the gas station that, hey, thank you for working so I could have my gas and my booze or my cigarettes behind the counter. Thank you for working. You would be surprised on the expressional reaction that you get from these people's faces. It's like, it's like hallelujah of the heavens comes down to touch them and they go every single time that I do it, whether it be at a gas station, whether it be the drive through, it costs you nothing to do it. And it takes a little bit of time and people go, whoa, I can't believe someone did that. And you know what happens? They go, how can I do that for someone else? Yes. So it spreads like osmosis. So that's when I see that, that's my why. That's what I get into. And it could be a little Disneylandish. I get it. I know how it sounds, but no, it's, it's a true. ripple effect of joy that you're spreading. True. Just as you, just as you fail forward, you are yeah. paying it forward. Yes, absolutely. Attitude and- forward, appreciation forward. Because let's face it, it's it's a uh, people don't always see themselves for the beauty that they are. Or and you're right; they, they need to be have. thanked. Yes, and appreciated because you know absolutely. what. They could be having a really rough day and they may be in that job or serving that role, not by choice, but by necessity. By obligation too. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. So to be seen, because so often, I mean, think about it. They aren't seen a lot of times. You know, it was really fascinating. Years ago, I worked in a hotel. I also worked in a retail store. No big deal. Yeah. Even recently I've delivered pizza. So I'm the owner of a successful business, but I took like little side jobs. Yeah. Not because I was struggling, but because I wanted to help. Yes. But it I, I also caught myself, I caught my own bias because when someone was dismissive of me, mm-hmm. I kind of let them know, um, no, I'm not to be dismissed. I'm not to be dismissed. <laughs> <laughs> I actually I'm here because I want to be, you know what I mean? Which, Absolutely. And, and, and how lucky am I that I get to serve in these roles, but then I also kind of have to take a step back of like, they probably aren't used to someone volunteering to take a, a pizza delivery job to help yeah. out their friend who is the yes. owner who is short staffed. And guess what? While I'm making that money, guess what? It's going to my Italian vacation that I have planned. Exactly right. So, but, but you know what I mean? Like yes. I, I, there have been times in these little jobs that don't have big status, you know? Yeah. And, and so they just aren't seen. Oh um, gosh, I didn't get any brownie points for being a repo man. In my twenties. <laughs> right? Like, what do you mean? You went, you, you're not going to college. You're going to go out there from 5 PM to 5 AM and riding around in a tow truck and, you know, possibly get shot. Yeah. That's exactly what I want to do. Wow. You know, a self-awareness is another one that I, that I tie into your previous question of know your why people, people I, I, I see, and this isn't an umbrella statement, but I see a lot of people not not wanting to do the work of self-awareness because let's put, let's face it, it puts a terrible work. responsibility on the person. It really does. Um, because true. everything you say and everything you do matters from that point. Yeah. If you really want to know yourself, 
inside and out. And that's another thing I deplore upon people that, you know, just or implore upon people like become self-aware, know who you are. If you are not meant to be around people and you want to be into a computer 18 hours a day, go do it. Don't fool yourself and others because it's going to be apparent just like sunshine if you are joyful and involved in your work or if you are just going through the motions. It's going to be very apparent. Oh, so true, brother. So true, right? And Go I can, find your joy. And, and if that joy is not being with people and you'd rather be around animals, yeah. Then do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know what cracks me up? There's a, there's a funny little ob- observation I have made about our auto repair industry. Please. This isn't blanket, but it okay. definitely is a statistic because it's, you know, I work with some of the top 10% yeah. shops in the country, but if yeah. I can count on one hand, <laughs> I know it's a statistic. <laughs> there are business owners that start because they love fixing things. And yes. they realize that the job involves dealing with people. Oops. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, so as they grow and become successful, these same shop owners start having farms. Yes. With animals that don't talk yes, back. Exactly it's kind of right. cute. It's kind of yes. cute. How yes. They're like, you know, I'm going to go to my farm now. Bye. Yeah. Goodbye, people. Yes. <laughs> and, <they go. laughs> and I have a theory on why that happens. Please. I think that people get into it for the monetary gain, which that should be a factor. You want to be in business to make money and to live of a course. comfortable lifestyle. I mean, let's not fool or cure ourselves. However, um, it should not be the only driving force because here's why. 100% of your clients are people. 100% of your vendors are people. 100% of your employees are people. Right. Kind of harsh to say, if you don't know people, you don't know business, period. It doesn't matter if you go to Harvard Business School. You just don't. And that was one of the things that really attracted me to Co-Auto was that he knows people. Oh, he's adorable. He is so intuitive and in tune with where people's intent are, where they're oh, yeah. grounded, where they're going, and how he could participate and facilitate that development, which is why I ended up here. And I couldn't have, you know, it's not just Vinny. It's the repo company that first hired me. It's the nightclub that hired me. All these different stages and different people in my life. I'm going to write a book about all these Please people do. and what they meant to me in my life before I, I you know, escape this earth in a different form. And he is definitely going to go right down as one of the best, just most empathetic, intuitive, unbelievably receptive for an owner. You know, an an owner that comes to you, even yes, I have a title of lead advisor. An owner comes to you and goes, hey, what's your idea on this? Instead of I have this idea and we need, I need to point guns at everybody to make sure that the outcome that I predicted occurs. He doesn't operate like that. So it's such a nice change of venue um, as far as, you know, you being able to open freely, you know, share ideas, um, share beliefs, share opinions, even if they don't line up. And guess what? We're all individuals. They're not supposed to always line up. I don't want to be in an echo chamber for the rest of my life. I would love to be in a place where someone says, actually, good idea, but I want to add on to that or no bad idea. This is why. And, and that's where you, the people around you shape and form who you are. Exactly. And I think another thing that's really important to figure out your why as a person, and this goes for everybody, including the audience, you know, that may be watching this, is to surround yourself with the people who want the best for you. Yes. And simple. Do not yes. surround yourself with people who don't want the best for you. You know, people who, when something goes, and how could you tell? This is a very simple formula. Their words. It was good in your life, and they're happy for you. They're like, way to be, right on, good for you. You know, not the people, and I've experienced this as well. Not I'll the have. People, yeah, that idea is stupid, and you're stupid, and how it won't work. That's just not helpful. That uh-huh. doesn't build any, it, that doesn't build anything within an organization, within a relationship, and within a person. So true. The, the trigger words for me that I hear ridiculously often. And, you know, I, I, I surround myself with those that don't say these words, but the minute I hear, you can't do that. Oh yeah. Oh, oh gosh. Oh, it just, <laughs> I get PTSD sometimes from negativity. Yeah. I think I go, I can't be around this, but you, right? you know, you have to take the good in with the bad because I think the, 
Negativity is there to remind you how important your purpose and your why really is. That's where it falls back onto your backbone of what do I do to center myself and ground myself having been through this? Because life, there's an intrinsic travesty, hardship, and suffering that just comes with every life, period. So when you experience something like that, not ha I would, I would be, feel really bad for the people who didn't have a reverting outlet to kind of reground themselves and go, no, I don't need that person's validation to know who I am. I've reassured who I am by this validation. And this is how I'm going to go about it. And this is how I deal with it. But dealing with it in a healthy, productive manner is not only beneficial to you, it's because you can bring that healthy and productive process to those around you. You know, we all like to think we're just this little, you know, this little composition of 7.7 .7 billion stars that are in their little bubbles. You know, you are one person away from a thousand people and one person away from a million people, three people away from a billion people. If you consider most people meet almost in the average of a thousand people throughout their lives. So when you start thinking in those terms, it really kind of brings you back into perspective of, wow, how small the world really is and how what you do and just the, the aura that you give off when entering a room can make all the difference. Ah, oh, you are such a breath of fresh air. I adore you. you. I adore you. You're awesome. Ah, oh, well, isn't it fun? It's just a love fest. <laughs> but no, this is why I do what I do. I mean, yeah. this podcast was designed to allow me to reconnect with people when I haven't seen them because of COVID. So yes. here we are, 2022 at this juncture, mm -hmm. what we're in our third year of COVID. Yeah. Like the timeline is just like stretched. We're not yeah. quite over it, but we're still in an endemic, not necessarily a pandemic. We're in an endemic yes. stage, but still, isn't it fascinating how things have changed? And we, yes. we, we did get to see each other. Gosh, March. In, March. Uh, it was the beginning of the first week of March in Kansas yeah, city. In yeah. Kansas city. Yeah. And then, and then here we are beginning of summer yeah, I know. and we're doing this online and isn't it cool that like it is. i'm sure you would love to come back to california and visit but you know it's a long drive it is area. and i have been back there since to visit and yeah, i have, right. you know i was born and raised in california I absolutely love it um but that's another thing i've lived different places too i've lived all the way on the east coast for two years so yeah I've, you know done done so many different things and and do you love and, reno i do love reno and i love the people that i've met most of them you know, Vinny, Matt, Brenton, oh, yeah. you know, my crew. I mean, the the gentleman who sits beside me, Caesar, um, I, JC and, and Jody, I couldn't be more thankful to have these people in my life because every time I see them, it's just like, wow, how lucky am I? Right. Oh, you really do have a good crew. I mean, I, again, I, I work with a lot of shops. Again, I can count on one hand how how many have a crew that are just so tight and loving yeah. and supportive, lift each other up. But yes. the culture at your shop is just fan freaking tastic. Well, that comes so from proud the of you. Yeah, well, I'm just a practitioner and a follower of it. Vinny invented the culture. Him and Anthony really developed a place where culture can be grown and changed and modified and, you know, it's most cultures, and this is what I, one thing I will give to the Gen Zers that I absolutely love about them. I they love are Gen not, Zs. They are not buying the culture of corporate America that's been around for 50 years. They're saying, F you do it. And I absolutely go right on because I didn't get to say that. And I wanted to. And because I, my generation was so scared about not paying their bills, Gen Z's like, I don't care. I'll starve to death and I'll go on Top Ramen and do TikTok videos. I'm not doing this. And it's just such a relief to see that because that's that's a sign of changing times. And I think the companies that are going to grow and be prosperous, just not monetary wise, but where clients and vendors want to be a part and around that company are going to develop the best cultures for symbiotically people being in that culture. Right. Yes. I think those are the companies that are that are going to strive and that are going to make the long run. I'm talking about the macroeconomic. And I think Vinny has one of those companies and he's constantly working on it. He's constantly yeah. cognizant about what's going on in his business. 
And when he comes in, I mean, it's not, it, we don't dread like, oh my God, Vinny's here. Like everyone hide, you know, what you're doing or, you know, shut the windows on the computer. When we see him, we go, Vinny, what's going on? And right? sometimes they go, hey, Vin number, I need a favor from you. Or, hey, Vinsky, can you help me out here? Or, or hey, let me show you what I just did. Or let me and show you the cool, yeah, the cool trick or the problem yeah, that I solved or the, the smiling face that walked out the door. Yeah, yeah. But when you feed off of that, your serotonin and your oxytocin levels are at their peak. And that's really what helps develop good communication. People did want to be inspired to be great leaders or great participants, how they could help one other people. And, you know, it, it's just so great. You know, one of the, a couple of day, uh, one day last week, I had a client that came in extremely late. She was a very important client. She's a VIP. And she, I stayed after to help, you know, facilitate her getting her car for the weekend. And I, I went out there and I started doing the quality control duties, even though my quality control guy had already left. I just hopped in it. I didn't even notice over my shoulder, one of my technicians, Chris, he comes over and just starts helping. I didn't even have to ask. And I look over and I go, whoa, Chris, you don't have to do that. And he goes, yeah, I do. I saw you doing it. So I have to come in and do it too. That's where the cultures that are going to succeed is when people, it's like being the one man in the arena. Did you ever hear, read about that proverb? Like the one man in the arena, you're back in you know, you're, you're battling everything and every, everyone, all the spectators are just giving you hell. It's kind of like based on ancient Roman times. I won't get too carried away, but you're the one guy in the arena battling armies and just you're getting knocked to your knees, but you're blocking things. And, you know, you're, you're almost at the point where they're going to slay you. Someone from the spectatorship jumps down into the arena with you, runs over, taps you on the shoulder and says, hey, you need some help here. That's really that's how teams are born. That's how unity is, you know, is is invited into, into a culture. And I think. Vinny's got such a perfect pulse on him. He really oh. does. He's oh, yeah. going to go amazing long distances with that because I think that's where the next wave of recept people being receptive and attracted to is really going to be. It's not going to be, you know, about necessarily I'll pay you three hundred thousand dollars a year to do this, but you're going to be absolutely miserable doing it, and yes. you're going to have, you're going to have no no conscience when you go to bed because you know what you're doing is wrong. Or you can make 47 a year, be happy as F, have be a part of a culture and an organization that works to better their community as well as with their people involved in within their organization. Boom, you, you're already there. Amen. You've hit the point, in my opinion. So, oh, I love it. I love yeah. it. I love it. All right. So take us to advice land. Advice land. What? You bring so much to the table. My God, I love you. I got to take a deep right. breath on this one for a moment. I know, right? Because you you really bring so much. You could talk about how to never get your car repoed. You could talk yes. about how to how to um, put together the best uh, nightclub ever. You okay. could talk about meditation and how to yeah. improve yourself. I mean, you are you are just an encyclopedia. So hit me up. And I'm, Give me I'm some constantly, advice. My as you can see, I'm looking like Family Guy with my head getting <laughs> Um so advice, I would say on two or three different points. Number one, something that I mentioned earlier, it is so important to develop character and ability and stop chasing status and power. Stop looking for likes and comments and subscriptions because all you're doing is you, you have no personal connection to Sassy Pants 57 who said a good or a bad thing about you. You have a personal connection to your family, to the person you wake up next to, the person in the next room, the child you're trying to raise. The grandmother that's doing it, you know, not so well health wise. You have those are where your personal connections are. So, you know, focusing on those, preserving what you have, being eternally um, diligent in that preservation of work to always maintain it or even kick it up another notch is key. That's number one as far as advice. Don't chase status and power. I don't care what anybody on YouTube says, buy my marketing deal and you'll be a millionaire. I know tons of people that are millionaires that are freaking miserable. Lots of them. Yes. Out of 10 millionaires that I know, I know two of them, and I'm really going on the high scale, that are actually genuinely grounded, know their intent, and they're happy in their lives, and their money could end tomorrow, and they would still not change. They would still be the same person. So that's number one. Number, And I would say probably the second one, the most important one, I implore everyone in the audience to go out and start doing this at their 7-Eleven, their gas station, their next drive-through, the meal they get through a drive-through. 
have an attitude of gratitude. It costs you nothing. The reward is not scalable. There's no way you could scale the reward on that. You are passing positivity into a person, into another person's life that could be going through a great time or a hard time. Either way that goes, they're going to see that as so unusually receptive. They're going to want to pass it on to somebody else. It's kind of like this. Any company could write a check to uh, what one thing that a lot of automotive shops do is they write checks to support little league teams and they have little placards on their wall. Good for you. But if you told that, if you told somebody else that same little league team, yeah, I go there every Saturday and I help the kids who don't know how to swing a bat improve on their swing. That's when people are like, damn, I'm actually really not doing what I should be. And that's called giving of time. You know, at Co-Auto, we have a women's car care clinic. It requires all of us to prepare for it. It takes a lot of effort on my part, every one of the staff members part, my service manager's part, Vinny's part, to put it together. But we all have our own duties and we all come together and put it together. And at the end of it, yeah, we're dog tired because it's always held at the end of a Friday when we're just kill, you know, killing ourselves all week. And, and we're dog so tired. Done. Yeah. You are so exhaustingly rewarded. That would be the other piece of advice. You are not going to see, you are not going to obtain fulfillment or reward until you have exhausted your efforts to do so. And I'd say the third thing just come to mind, having an attitude of entitlement is not going to impress anybody. It's going to expose you for not wanting to work for developing yourself or contributing to organizations around you. So I know that there are a lot of people out there, well, I've worked hard already and I've done this and I've done that. I get that. I understand that. But that can't be your basis on going forward in your life is what you just did in the past. You have to constantly keep churning the machine of life and learning and growing. And, and the big one, fail forward. Fail hard on your face. If you're afraid of doing something, you're not going to get the courage to do it until after you do it, not before. That's the way it really works. And it's really hard to convey that to someone who's just really looking for that last punch and of inspiration to get up and do something. That's got to come from within. That's a character thing. It's not an ability. Thing, you know, yeah, so sure. I would say those would be my three pieces of advice for the audience. But really on the second one, go out there and have an attitude of gratitude, no matter if you're having a bad day. Take a deep breath, step back from yourself and tell that cashier at the Shell station that's running around like crazy, has a line out the door, her eyes are popping out of their head like, she, she, they're, like they're on springs because she is so stressed. Say, hey, you're doing a great job. Thank you so much for working so I could have my stuff, whatever it is. And mention that, often. whether it's you know my gas, my drink, you will have a moment of clarity like you will never experience from another stranger ever and they will ultimately say wow thank you for saying that and they're going to pass it along to someone else and you can't scale it because you can't know where that ends but that is such the best way because when you walk back to your vehicle no matter how much of a day you had you're going to be like well at least i did my one good thing for the day that could make me smile and make me feel good about being me and that's really you've got to live with yourself you have to wake up and breathe your life every day. No one else can do it for you and no one else will do it for you, nor should they. And I end with that, I guess. Oh, I love it. Oh my God. Okay, it's time for people to know how to reach you. How to reach me, okay. How to reach you. Good you luck are. because I have no because social media. Like, <laughs> I want some of that positivity. You know what's really funny? I don't know if I told you, but I am the fairy godmother. <laughs> You of are one of, of one of the groups, and I have this fun little wand. I need to get you a wand, buddy, because you're you're the you're the equivalent of me. <laughs> I would say a staff would be more masculine and fitting, but we'll get you a, a, we'll get you a trident. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Like Gandalf. <laughs> yeah, there you go, there you go, like Aquaman. You know, exactly. All right, James Cole. How does someone find you in the world, man? Well, I can give you my email address. Okay. It's J, J Cole J C O L E at coauto, C-O-A-U-T-O, N-V as in the initials for Nevada.com. So jcole at coauto, N-V.com. I love it. I love it. So anybody who is in the Reno, Nevada area, please go see this amazing man and the amazing auto repair shop that he works at. 
uh, co-auto. They really are. And, and I, what's so funny is technically you guys are not a client of mine, but I'm such a super fan that when the day comes that I do get to do marketing for you, oh, hold on to your hats, buddy. Heavens are going to open. <laughs> it's going to be so much fun. It is. And then, and then if someone were to, wanted to visit the website, coautonv.com. Yeah. Yes. And then if they wanted to call, what's the number? The number is area code 775-360-5362. I love it. I love it. Not only did we did some fabulous advertising for Co Auto, but really, you you are such an amazing human being. Thank I'm you so, so much for glad ha- you took me up on my offer to be on my. Oh podcast. my gosh! When I saw that offer, you know, this is my first podcast. So when I saw that offer, I said, just like I said in the beginning, wow, I'm curious about this. I've always been, I listen to podcasts on the regular. I said, this is something I need to get involved with, even if I fall on my face. Which I didn't think I was going to. Not at all. Never. Even if I fall on my face, I still wanted to do it. And I'm glad you reached out because I immediately did. And I'm I'm very privileged and honored to have this time with you. I'm so sorry that I misread the time. It should have been 5.30 instead of, I was thinking 6.30, but. No big um, deal, honey. It's what fine. happens when you get older, you know? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's all good. It all works out. And as soon as we're done, husband and I are going to go shopping and get some dinner and pack for for our trip to Florida tomorrow. So where are you going in Florida? Well, going to go see family. I originally am from there. So I'm from the Jacksonville area. Okay. I know. I'm very familiar. Okay. So we're going to be in the uh, Flagler County, which is. um, Yeah. So so, uh, you're familiar with Flagler County? I am. I am. Excellent. I have friends from Jacksonville all the way down the Treasure Coast of Miami. Beautiful. All right. So yeah, we were going to see the family in Jacksonville, flying into Orlando, see the family okay. in Flagler County. Um, you know, just kind of do that thing for a week. But I'm so you. lucky that both of my grandmothers are still alive, 98 and 97. Wow. So time is precious, and we are going to visit them, and of course my Good mother, and of course the rest of them. But you know what I mean. It's like yeah. it's grandmas. It's Absolutely. it's sitting at the feet of our elders and letting them pour into us. It is. It is, and I think those are very important relationships to cultivate because you never never leave anything unsaid or undone. I've Amen. always lived by that, and I no longer have either one of my parents, but I didn't leave anything unsaid or undid. You know. I'm glad you brought that up. So my daddy passed in uh, 2020. He had Lewy body dementia and he was passing just as COVID was starting. It was like, I'm so glad that he didn't have to suffer through the whole, the whole COVID thing. And and I I remember the night before he passed, I, I hugged him and I I was just like, I think I'm good. I've I've said everything. I love you. I set you free. And, and then, and then like a couple of weeks later, I'm like, dang it. I didn't get a chance to update him on this newest thing or this newest thing. It's like, I thought I said everything and then new things happen and I have so much more to (laughs) tell. Well, I have a spiritual belief side of me as well. Yeah. I don't think you needed to, because I think he already knows. Oh yeah. I, I, I I talk with my dad all the time, even though he's not here in body. Yes. He is definitely here in spirit. And sometimes I'll hear him talking to me like, okay, I'm listening. Oh yeah. Absolutely. I can still hear my father yelling at me. <laughs> Stop taking my car. Oh, absolutely. No, no, it's not that. It's 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 other words that come out that I probably can't share on this podcast. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. Well, listen, you enjoy your evening. And anybody, everybody who is listening, I hope you would really, truly, I hope you got a, a tickle out of hanging out with James and I. Um isn't he an amazing human being? And uh, truly, join us for the next episode. We, It's always fun. If you want to be on this show, this show is available for anyone. I have met the most fascinating people. And, and what's fun is you don't have to be a someone of high status. Just have no. a character yeah. and be willing to connect on a deeper level. Because we don't just talk about the weather here. So <laughs> You are awesome, Jen. Thank you so much for having me. It's been such a privilege and an honor. All right, buddy. So great seeing you. I so, so appreciate you. This is so much fun. Thanks for showing oh, up awesome. and like have a beautiful evening. Okay. You do the same and have a great evening with your husband. And 
Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Bye.